I've been thinking a lot about how different types of notes can have different impacts on people in the future, including yourself. Obviously, the first audience for any kind of note-taking is going to be yourself in the future. I just wanted to take a second to brainstorm out these thoughts. So when you or anybody types a bunch of stuff as, you know, a way of taking notes, that's a form of encoding the brain waves you're going through or the stimulus that you're sensing from, let's say, a lecture from a professor into a form that theoretically has value to you in the future when you're studying for your test. Or, you know, what's funny about life is since there is no test, you have to have the discipline to go back and read your old notes, which is something that I think a lot of people find difficult. So that's why TinyVox into YouTube is a real revolution for, you know, creating an, an external brain for yourself. Because for some reason, I go back and I listen to these YouTubes. Like, it's really interesting to see my thinking. And w something I've always dreamed about was taking um, the Mind Ma Manager app, like MindJet, which is just an awesome app. And, um, you know, making outlines that I could then talk out in YouTube. So this is like my first experiment with that. Hopefully it'll work. The last image for some reason was twisted, but we're, we're working on it. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna take some time, but we'll, we'll, we'll get this fixed. At any rate, um, audio is a lot easier to create raw audio like this, it's just a lot easier to create than typing. You know, uh, there are amazing new tools for typing. I'm not here to say that typing isn't incredibly valuable. Clearly, when you submit a t paper for a professor, you're going to have to do some typing. But in order to just capture the ideas faster, you really ought to be tape recording them. Now, why not video record them and why not like, you know, use, let's say, just the camera app to video record it. Well, first of all, video takes a lot more space up on your iPhone. And second of all, why hold the phone up like a dork the whole time while like a lecture is going on? I mean, that's just not realistic, right? So I just think that like video on a casual basis is just not as valuable as it's called cracked up to be, but then audio on a mobile device, it's a smartphone. I mean, you talk into a phone, a phone call is audio. So clearly like, I, you know, there's a lot of typing that could go on in TinyVox. So there's this powerful synthesis of text and um, audio with TinyVox and there always has been. But now we're adding like this YouTube thing which lets you take a photo as well. Or you know you can take a screen capture on your iPhone simply by pressing the two buttons at the same time. I probably ought to make a video just for that because a lot of people don't know about screen captures, believe it or not. But um, you can do almost any kind of research or meta brainstorming on almost any topic. Wait, almost any topic. Brainstorm on any topic into YouTube. That's what I'm doing right now. And what I would argue is that if you're just scribbling instead of taking notes, that's not quite cutting it. If you're typing, I mean, it just doesn't seem that likely that people will type as rigorously as anybody could tape. And the thing about taping is it's effortless and it's perfect. So I can't you know, because you'll have the entire lecture, for instance, you know, as something that you can press play on in YouTube, right? So, uh, again, the YouTube integration is not ready yet. It's coming out soon. But this is like a demo of what you will be able to do, hopefully, by the time you hit school. So uh, please spread the word about this. I think TinyVox is going to change the academic experience completely. Spread the word.